Hi everybody! So today we're going to be doing camouflage part two. Okay, so who remembers what camouflage means? Well, it is when an animal blends into their background so other animals, those predators, can't see them and try and eat them. Okay, but also it helps them hide away from their prey so they're able to find their dinner as well. Now, who remembers the four types of camouflage? Well, don't worry, we're going to recap now. So we have concealing coloration. This is when an animal hides itself against a background of the same colour. For example, animals that live in the Arctic would have white colouring to blend in with the snow. Then you've got disruptive coloration. This is when the animal has spots, stripes or patterns to break up their outline so it doesn't stick out against its background. Leopards, tigers and some fish often use this as camouflage. Disguise. This is when an animal blends in with their surroundings by looking like another object. Often insects use this when they look like a leaf or part of a tree. It's like they're using a costume to hide from predators. Then we've got mimicry. This is when an animal looks like another dangerous, bad tasting, poisonous or venomous animal. They pretend to be what they're not. Some snakes, butterflies or moths use this type of camouflage. So we are going to be talking about disguise and mimicry. Okay, so disguise, probably the easiest way to remember this one is imagine the animal is wearing a costume. Okay, <laughs> it's the easiest way. So it's very similar to concealing coloration that we learned about last time, where the animal uses their colour of their body to blend in with their background. So do you remember Sydney the frog that we met? He, um, when I held him up to the background here, he blended in. You couldn't see him. So that's what concealing coloration is whereas disguise is where the animal uses their body shape as well as their color so the animal that we are going to meet that does this is sticky now sticky is one of our giant thorny stick insects he's called this because I'll get him nice and close so you can see and I'll just focus him in so can you see on his back leg he's got this lovely thorn coming out just there that is where they get their name. And these guys, if they get grumpy, they will snap their back leg together. And if your finger is in the way, that hurts. Trust me. OK, but I can tell he's in a good mood today. So uh, he's very happy to be shown to you. <laughs> so I'm safe. My fingers are safe. Now, these guys are called stick insects because let's have a little look at him. What does he look like? A stick. OK, so these guys would live in the trees. Uh, most stick insects, you would find them living in the trees. Now, these guys, being a giant stick insect, once they reach adulthood, so the size he is now, the size of my hand, he would actually climb down from the tree and live on the ground amongst all of the fallen branches and twigs and sticks. And he'd camouflage there. Now, he is a herbivore. So that means he's not going to be hunting anything for his food. He's going to be eating things like leaves, which is very handy having living in the trees. Um, but there's going to be animals that want to eat him. So if he does see one of those predators, he will stay really, really still. Like he's doing now, actually. He won't move. And then that other animal is not going to be able to spot him. If he was sat in one of your trees in your garden... I think you would have quite a tricky time spotting him. So an amazing piece of camouflage, amazing disguise. So next up, we're going to be talking about mimicry. So the easiest way to remember this one is mimicry means an animal mimicking another animal. They are pretending to have the characteristics of another dangerous animal. So that means they could be pretending to be poisonous or venomous just really really dangerous okay so we are going to meet our friend Simon now Simon is called a blue tongued skink he's kind of just given away why he's called the blue tongued skink I'm going to get him nice and close focused in for you there we go so he's called a br uh, blue tongued skink because he's got a bright blue tongue you're going to stick it out again of course not <laughs> So he uses his bright blue tongue to scare off animals. So if a predator came up to him, he would open his mouth out wide. Inside his mouth is bright pink. Then he sticks his bright blue tongue out. Now that predator would go, whoa, I know that bright colours, bold markings, they mean that an animal is poisonous, venomous, very, very dangerous. I must leave them alone. I'm not going to eat you. OK, but 
Simon here, he's a great big pretender. He is not poisonous or venomous. But don't worry, Simon, I will not tell your secret to anybody. Uh, you won't tell his secret to anyone either. Fab. <laughs> So as you did so well on Tuesday, I think it is time for another quiz. Get your thinking caps on. First up, we have the Viceroy Butterfly. It has pretty much identical colours and markings to that of the poisonous monarch butterfly. So what camouflage is it using? Mimicry. Now we have the beautiful Orchid Mantis, which looks just like a flower. So what kind of camouflage is this? Disguise. Then we have our sand grasshopper, which would live in the sandy soiled grass areas of North America. So which camouflage do you think he uses? Disguise. Now we have the non-venomous scarlet king snake, which has a very similar pattern to the venomous coral snake, which is very confusing to predators. Now which kind of camouflage is this? Mimicry. And lastly, we have a leaf insect, a master of camouflage. But which one? If you find them in the trees looking like a leaf, it must be... Disguise. Well done. So I think you're pretty much experts in camouflage now. Well done you. <laughs> so you may have noticed that this week, I took part in my very own mini beast challenge. I did a sleepover with our foxes. I slept in their enclosure, in the cold, in the rain. It was gross, <laughs> but I need your help now, okay? So please, if you enjoyed, because I did post a video of it as well and some photos, if you enjoyed watching that, if you think I did a really good job, please can I ask you to donate to our Animal Care Fund. Um, details are in the post for that. But also, do you want to take part in your own mini beast challenge? It can be anything. You don't have to sleep out in the garden with foxes. You can do your own challenge. We've had um, people play um, The Floor is Lava. We've had somebody make a hedgehog house. We've had all sorts of challenges. Um, but the main reason for doing this is to raise some money for our animals so the challenge doesn't matter it can be anything that you just find a little bit tricky and um, that people think well done you you deserve a little sponsor for that um any more information that you'd like please just pop me a message and i'll be happy to give you all the details um but i look forward to seeing you on tuesday have a lovely weekend everybody bye